Hi, I'm Paul Williams, and I'm a songwriter. You're watching the second edition of Inspiring Revolutions presented by the ASCAP Foundation. Today we're going to be talking to the very talented Ryan Casada. Ryan is an actor, a songwriter, he is a performer, a powerful voice for the LGBTQ plus community. He's also a recipient of the Sunlight of the Spirit Award presented by Paul and Mariana Williams. Ta-da! It's an award we give for people who are exemplary in both their music and their recovery. So we're glad you're here to enjoy this conversation, songwriter to songwriter, dealing with what it's like to find the creative spirit in the midst of a pandemic. I hope you enjoy. Ryan, it's really good to see you. And as you know, I'm a, a big fan. I, I, I think the first song of yours that I heard was Jupiter. And I, I just loved it, uh, your, your lyric writing and and just, you know, the authenticity of what you're writing. Thank you. You write straight from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And you perform. What happened to your performing career the last six months? <laughs> it went, it's gone. I performed once in six months yeah. at a, the premiere of the movie I'm in Two Eyes, so I got to do the drive-in yeah. experience. Yeah. Oh, oh, you did the drive-in opening yeah. up for the pair. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. Guys are doing concerts and everything with the drive-in mm -hmm. format these days and all. Tell us a little bit about the music, about the movie, rather. Yeah, the movie is, it's uh, three eras. So it's the 1800s, the uh, 1979, and then modern day without a pandemic. And it is about queer people. And through all those ages, it's fiction. And in it, I play a young trans teenager, and my therapist in the movie is Kate Bornstein, who is a legend. Legend in the, in the community, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the 70s and the current, I'm a, an expert on two of those areas yeah. and all, the, the 1800s <laughs> I missed and all. You're, you know, we also have a, we have a few things in common amongst the fact that mm -hmm. we, we both write songs and we both act. Which came first? The songs came first. Yeah. I started, when I was 12 with the songs, um, actually like, you know, writing them and playing them. As soon as I learned piano, it was, it was history. Um, my first song was Wonderful Beautiful and I wrote it about some like vampire book I was reading. <laughs> and my mom came home and I was playing and she's like, oh, whose song is that? And I was like, me. She's like, and says, hello, suddenly I have a genius for, you know. That the, the amazing thing is the way that, that just, you, you talk about the eras of 78 and up till now and all. Uh, f you know, for me, that's a long, a long, a lot of history. You're talking about writing from when you were 12 until now. When you look at it, what do you see in those early songs that, that, that has survived or is? Yeah, I mean, I just actually listened to the first record I made and it's coming up on the, 10 year anniversary wow. and I'm just like I'm only 27 you know <laughs> exactly. it's a little weird yeah. but now like listening to it I'm like how did I come up with that when I was super young what did my parents think yeah. you know I think sometimes we, we might be old souls because I know that I, I will look at some of the songs I wrote in my late 20s and they're about about time moving on and leaving mm -hmm. us behind and all this stuff that 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 an old guy should be writing, yeah. and I was writing it then. Uh, you're writing from, a, from a, a very deep place. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what it is. It just, it feels like, to me, it feels like spiritual, like it's a gift Yeah, yeah. from above. Like, I don't even feel like it's me writing. That's, you know, you know, you manage to say something that, that I spent a lot of time trying to explain to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the example that I give about writing is what it's like when you can't remember somebody's name and you're going, this is ridiculous, which happens to me more and more. But I'll be trying to remember somebody's name and I can't. And then later on when I'm doing something else, usually washing my hands <laughs> or I'm in the shower or whatever, yeah. or in the middle of the night, I'll sit up and, and I'll say, Linda McCartney, you know, and my wife will say, Yes, who is that? You know, but it's like while I wasn't thinking about it, mm. while I wasn't thinking about it, the the unconscious was was working on it. Yeah. And you know, there's a wonderful uh, composer named Richard Bellis, and he talks about the fact that that we have a tendency as as songwriters sometimes to kind of put something off, put something off, and then at the last minute, 
we, we write it and it pours out of it. He says it's percolation. Percolate, we're percolating instead of procrastinating. Yeah. I think that, that the largest part of, of my writing, and it sounds like yours, is that, that connection to the unconscious yeah. and letting it come from there. It's a deeply meditative state and like really being in the moment completely, which I think a lot of people maybe can't access that or yeah. don't know what it feels like. And people call it inspiration yeah. or yeah. a muse or whatever you want to call it, but... There's a part of me that thinks that everybody has a, that to some degree and they just a lot of people tell them, that, don't be silly, don't be silly, oh, mm. come on, wait a minute. You get a job, you, can, you go to work, and, uh, and what's this songwriting nonsense and all. Or in my case, I wanted to be an actor. How did that loop from, from one to the other? Yeah, it, that was like a, a ladder. Um, when I went, I went on Larry King when I was 15, and then after I made that appearance, a movie director called me for like a short film, and I auditioned, and I, instead of bringing a headshot, I brought my demo tape, mm -hmm. and I didn't book the role, but they had me compose the movie. <laughs> and then at 15 yeah I know. call then, my agent right now <laughs> and then years later like six years later that director um hooked me up with his friend who was making a movie and they're like if you want it it's yours like and then yeah. then I got agents because of that and then I got this I, I got this movie because he googled me Travis Fine Googled me. He, they had a bunch of auditions apparently and couldn't find the kid. And yeah. then Travis Fine Googled me and he, and he called uh, the other producers and he said, I found the kid. Called my agents and yeah, he was like, if, if he wants it, it's his. You know, it's interesting. I don't think you, I don't think you could plan you know, the, the events that, that took you to the, the success you're having right now. I, you know, I look back on my own life and I go, most of the best things I got right after I lost something I really wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. So no became a gift in a way, you know. Yeah. And, and, and uh, ob, you know, uh, real obstacles became opportunities. I get very Jiminy Cricket about this stuff. Yeah. All. You were on Larry King at 15. What were you doing on, on Larry King? I came out as trans on international television. I was out to a few people not my extended family and then it was like the prime time yeah. hour of cnn yeah. and yeah. like the whole world was watching a lot of pressure for just well years. yeah but you know what <laughs> you were born an advocate yeah i always felt that i had a certain responsibility and when i came out there was no one out that was my age like yeah. i was alone when i went on that show i was like maybe i'll find someone else and maybe they'll find me and it was, it was like my message in a bottle to the world, like the, the police song. And when, after that appearance, hundreds and hundreds of letters to my P.O. box and to my email and my MySpace with a people. Sin, a, a tsunami of, of affection mm -hmm. and respect. And, yeah. yeah, and people that said, I saw you and now I'm, I know I'm not alone. Wow. Mm -hmm. Please, I mean, it's just, it's remarkable, it's courageous, and, uh, you know, and, and it built you a pretty good music audience. Yeah, and I mean, I was starting before that, I had a, a few newspaper appearances, I had a pretty good following on MySpace, which yeah. used to be great for music. Yeah, yeah. And then that Larry King thing, and to, to show you how different the times were, when I went on Larry King, I went on with my first name only and there was not many people named Ryan that were out as trans yeah, I think yeah. it was just me and Ryan Salins yeah. so like if you google Ryan trans like I was the first thing that popped up yeah because oh, no one was out yeah yeah, yeah. wow mm. uh, it, it's so impressive you know and it seems to have it's it's it, it's kind of in the air because you know out of the mouths of babes look at look at in the issues of, of of you know gun control and and uh, just again and again and again we're seeing you know young voices making a huge difference in our world yeah. and just in time mm -hmm. you know uh, I have to ask you about about the creative process 
in the midst of this, what feels like the plague. It's just, it's been such a bizarre experience to, to, uh, to, to, to be lo you know, in lockdown. Yeah. And I, you know, the, and, and, there, and there's a lot of fear, and, and justifiably around the world. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a lot of fear at first in the beginning, and I went through a lot of heartbreak in the beginning of the pandemic, and that, it, it fueled me, you know? Like, that heartbreak is also a gift for a songwriter. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it provided some real tears. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quoting, I love the line from, from, from uh, a witch's song. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, what's the line? These are my real tears, product of escaping fears. Ooh, real yeah. tears, you know, because we had, I guess we have crocodile tears, but it's, <laughs> there's such an authenticity to, to your writing. And incidentally, folks, you're going to get a chance to hear a couple of Ryan songs. is called You and Me, Babe, and it's in the movie Two Eyes. You and me, babe, in it for the long game, moving like twin flames, reading by the fireplace. And I know you Deep inside of me And I knew you Before I could see We're in each other's past lives our love could only be right A road maps in the sky We radiate a bright light And you know me Deep inside of you And you knew me Before you made a move What's your process? Do you, do you run, wake up in the middle of the night and run and get a pen? Or? Yeah, and that, that's always been how it's felt. It's like this feeling that I cannot describe washes over me. I'm like, oh, like, it's time. Like, yeah. get to a guitar, get to a piano. Yeah. And my, like, growing up, my mom was so supportive. Like, she was like, if you got to play guitar in the middle of the night, totally fine. Yeah, oh, really? Like, she <laughs> At was, 11. She was, you know, she's a big Springsteen yeah. fan. So she wow. was like, she felt like, wow, I got this songwriter kid, you know, yeah. like, so I mean, that's how it was. And I mean, in school, I'd get yelled at by the teachers a lot for, I would think of lyrics and I'd yeah. be writing them in my textbook yeah. and wherever I could. And they were like, Ryan, stop writing stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. it's not notes for class. And were you, was, was this something with your arm around it and you weren't really showing it to people right away or, or yeah. was it? Yeah. I was always paranoid too that people would like try to steal the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, like I wouldn't yeah, like yeah. if I was listening to like a demo yeah. that wasn't out, I wouldn't like roll the windows down yeah, okay. in my car. I was like, oh, what if someone? Okay, I'll send you. This? I'll send your journals back to you. I swear to God, I didn't use any. You know, I I hinted at the beginning of our conversation that we have something, a couple things in common that that we're you know we're both songwriters, 
and, uh, and we both had the experience of waking up instead of coming to. Mm -hmm. uh, we're both members of, of the life-giving recovery community. Mm -hmm. So you were how old when you got sober? I was 20. I was, I was 49, you know. And, uh, and you're, so you're almost seven years sober. Mm -hmm. uh, it's spectacular that you made that, that choice, that you, you dove into that, that real world, real life, real tears. Yeah. Uh, at that point in your life. As I say, I, I was 49. Uh, I just celebrated 30 years Amazing. and they feel like the best years in my life. Yeah. Did you at 20 when you when you got sober? Uh, you know, one of the questions we hear all the time is, is it, was it easier to write it when you had the, the drugs and the booze? Mm -hmm. and, all? and I always say that mm -hmm. I wrote in spite of that, not because of it. Talk to me about writing in, in the two conditions. Yeah, I, I wrote a lot before I got sober and then I, I definitely had a fear, like, oh, am I gonna still like be creative? Am, am, am I still gonna write? And you know, you hear about all those poets and writers that they like need to be drunk to write. Yeah. And I thought that was what was gonna be true. And in my early sobriety, like those first few months, I wrote a record, and then, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it, you know, it went into it. I felt like more raw. I felt like I could get in touch more yeah. with what I was feeling yeah. and, and access it more. Yeah. Like I was definitely way less tired yeah. and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, way less it, run down. It, it feels, when I, when I read your lyrics and everything, it's like, I don't know, I had this experience when I was high that I would, that everything I was writing was so brilliant, you know, and I was trying to outdo myself for how clever I was. So I wrote these really clever lyrics that nobody ever wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like, because there was no heart in it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the big change for me was when I started writing, uh, first of all, I turned it over. It's like, big amigo, we're going to write a song today. It'd be great if you have an idea, you know. Yeah. But I really turned it over and just kind of opened it up. And what I started writing and what I looked at, what I'd written before, that were, really had done well was not clever, it was, but it was honest. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and based on what I was feeling, you know, and I write codependent anthems. They're all ouch mommy songs. You know, <laughs> pick me up and love me. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 was there a specific area of, you know, of, of you found yourself writing about rejection, about yeah. bullying? Yeah, a lot about, about love. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I wrote my, I guess it's my most popular song, Daughter, in sobriety. And yeah. I, always, I always think that like, Oh, you know, like you can't write anymore. And then I'm like, I wrote Daughter Sober. Yeah. yeah. And that song came to me and I wrote that song in 10 minutes, you know, thinking that, oh, this is something I'm going to just give to my dad. Yeah. And then everyone's trans kid's wow. dad yeah. wanted it. Oh, it's, it's um, And the yeah. kids. But, yeah. and I wrote this song, Bedroom Eyes, that, that, was, that was probably one of the first songs I wrote. I wrote that definitely in my first year of sobriety and it was about like going through a really rough time and and not being ready to like fully commit to love because there was like too much hurt that I had to get through yeah. Wow! so like all the getting sober inspired me who did you listen to when you were first discovering music the first um, band that I got really truly obsessed with was Guns N' Roses <laughs> yeah. obsessed. and they I mean they have a lot of hooks yeah um, so that was, that was, I was big on that. I wore like the bandana and everything, like Axl Rose. <laughs> I was like in sixth grade. I love it. And then in high school, I, I was obsessed with The Doors and Led Zeppelin. And I read like all Jim Morrison's poetry books and everything that don't make much sense. <laughs> I think he was wow. on way too many drugs. <laughs> yeah. But oh, I, yeah. you know, I yeah. liked it. And... I was actually in the movie The Doors. I, I play. Oh, a, really? a, Yeah, I played this sort of Truman Capote-esque you know, press yeah. agent, whatever. And, and uh, just, you know, I have to, have to tell I you that, that showing up on the set felt like a slip. It was just, yeah. uh, it was so authentic. Oh and, man, you know, it was crazy, you know. But, but uh, the 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 heart, you know, in the work is is 
is what keeps me in it. And every now and then I'll write something that just surprises me. Mm -hmm. The other thing I love about you know starting out with that that kind of love of of, of those groups and all. And then coming to a place where it feels like a lot of the rules of songwriting. I've been working with Portugal the Man a bunch, Amazing. and I have learned more from them as I, you know, I learned from listening to your your music. Mm, thank you. Uh, that's just flat out. There's there's kind of a discarding of not not a. It's an it's, it's it has nothing to do with the lessening of the craft. Yeah. But I have to tell you that there is something about the freedom in the way that writing has evolved in the last maybe five ten yeah, years. Yeah. Just do what you feel. Yeah. And so don't like follow like this that. format. <laughs> it's a lot. I love it. I, yeah. just, I just love it. So it's it like, you know, it, uh, all of a sudden I'm, it, it, it lit something inside me. I, it mm. was just, I love, I love this freedom. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love it too. I'm working on this record right now that's combining um, elements of like indie rock, trap, hip hop. And it's, it's weird. Like yeah. it's weird. Yeah. But it's um, it just is what it's what I'm feeling right now. It's it's called yours. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. Yeah. I even sampled my my dog barking. He has perfect pitch. So. No, you, you this new record. You were you were you were home alone with all this equipment and everything. Yeah. You I was know, like, so, what do I do with this? So how did <laughs> how did you deal with the process of just learning to you know to get what you were thinking and feeling in a presentable fashion as in a record? Yeah, I mean, I I watched a ton of YouTube tutorials on how to work Logic and how to do like some of the plugins and all of that. I learned how to make beats. Yeah. Wow. And it's just like it's just like okay, listen, just listen to the to the beat in the song instead of cuz I always listen to the melody in the lyrics. Yeah. Like that's my go-to when I listen yeah. to music. But I was like, "All right, instead of listening to that, listen closely to the drum beat." And then l listen closely to the bass the next time you listen to it. And then that's how, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I learned from listening to other other things and seeing all right this feels this feels like a drum beat Let's well i like I, I like your remixes so it's Thank like you. you know you are in fact becoming a producer i guess or, so with, me, with or, one or working year so. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> well we've been talking about all this is there anything in in, in the future that you you want to plug or share with with our listeners what's coming up um i mean the movie's hopefully going to go to more places yeah. two eyes it's called and I'm, I hope early next year I'll release this record that I'm working on now. Try to keep up with the one year, one record thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try to compete with myself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you, but you've got a band you've been working with a while. Yeah, 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 yeah a little bit. Um, we keep having members switch out and all of that. Yeah. But I mean, I've been playing solo with the electric guitar and I, I like to improvise a lot and like when I play live I just like just do whatever I feel. Yeah. So sometimes with the band it's hard because I've you know, they are like following me and if I'm like going too out into the water they're like <laughs> yeah. Ryan. Oh no, wait, wait. I can't see you because the weeds are so high. We're yeah. deep in the weeds at all. Well, you know what, it's an honor to sit down and talk with you. As you know, I've been a fan for a long time. Thank you. Uh, and I, I think that, that the perfect way to, to slide on out of this is to listen to a couple songs you know cool. so uh, we're gonna reset stuff here and it will go but just like that for all you people it'll take hours for us but we'll see you <laughs> watch this watch how quickly <laughs> Thank you.
Cause I want you in my life I'm just living true No doubt in my mind And these changes They take time you'll find I didn't change who I am Accept me as your son, but that doesn't mean your daughter ever did run. I'm always be close to you, no matter what. I love you, and no doors are ever shut. I didn't change who I am. Thank you everyone for watching and, and a special thank you to Ryan. You know, in recovery we have a, a prayer actually that has a, a line in it that says, the courage to change. I think what we witnessed today was one of the most elegant examples of somebody with the courage to change. I'm Paul Williams, I'm the president of the ASCAP Foundation. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube, to, just to watch other episodes of this amazing conversation with some great songwriters, inspiring revolutions. <laughs>